take a look at another one. Go ahead and read this one to yourself. You notice there are some variables in the answer choices. We might be able to pick a number. Let's see, we also see these fractions here. So maybe we're gonna come up with a number that works well with them. Go ahead and read the question to yourself really quickly and then we'll work on it. So, We've learned a few times here that the GMAT loves taking fractions and percents of unknown numbers. So on a certain exam, two-fifths of the questions, okay, GMAT, I'd like to know how many questions there were. Oh, you don't want to give it to me, that's fine, I'm going to make up a number, five times four is 20, it seems like a reasonable number, I could go with 40 as well, it should work. So on a certain exam, two-fifths of the questions involve reading comprehension. So two-fifths of 20 should give us eight. Reading comprehension, just keeping the information organized. And one quarter of the remaining, this is why I like these sort of little trees here because I can do the remaining really easily. Uh, the remaining must be uh, 12 and they want a quarter of that. Great, this is just the remaining. They want a quarter of that which should give me three. And, three if, and one quarter of the remaining questions on the test were critical reasoning. Great. If the exam contains C critical reasoning questions, so C, then how many, sorry, how many reading comprehension questions did the exam include in terms of C? This never means anything. Just answer the question, how many reading comprehension questions did the exam include? So the value for C is three and we're looking for eight because we already have the answer to the question. They said, how many reading comprehension questions did the exam include? I figured that out way back when. The answer is eight and C is three. So if I plug into these three for C, which one spits back out eight? This one you can see does, because if I put three in here, eight times three over three, these two cancel and I'm left with eight. So on this question, we should have been able to anticipate that this, GMAT likes to do this, so they've given us some fraction of some unknown amount. We figured out a number that we could use that could make the arithmetic straightforward. It was 20. We did two-fifths of that, gave us eight reading comprehension questions, the actual answer to the question. There were 12 remaining. We took a quarter of those. Those were the, reading, uh, those were the critical reasoning questions and they want to know how many reading comprehension questions were get there given that there were three critical reasoning questions and the answer is eight and this gives us eight. So even at the beginning of it we saw that there was a variable here we were probably going to plug in some numbers for them we looked at the question and worked it and we realized that this was a good number to come up with we did it and we got the answer. Assuming we're correct. Great. We have a couple of more that we're going to work through here. These are some good examples, so don't go away. And then we're going to have some Stacy Blackman MBA admissions time. It's going to be great. Here's a question. Take a few seconds to read it, and we'll work this one together. So we have a couple of people, I'm just going to keep myself organized here. If the amount of Tom's savings account is tripled, it would have $380 more than his brother's. Okay, that's, don't know how much he has. But they tell us if Tom's brother has $520, green for money, $520 in his savings account, what is the current amount in Tom's? Well, they gave us the rules, so let's just get organized. 520, if the amount in Tom's savings account is tripled, it would have 380 more dollars than his brother. So he has more than his brother. He would have 380 dollars more if his was tripled. So that should give us, what, 900? Is that correct? Yeah. And they tell us that he would have 
this would be three times what Tom had. So Tom should have 300. I think that's the end of that. So this was just, didn't set up an algebraic equation, just took the information and boiled it down to some basic arithmetic and information management. So Tom and his brother, his brother has 520. They tell me that if his brother had um, Tom would, uh, $380 more, um, Tom's would be a third of that total. And we figured out what Tom has. Great. Now let's uh, just take a look at the uh, whiteboard here and we're going to just do some basic math. I want everyone to answer these math questions in the embed for me as I ask them and they are uh, what is uh, 100 times 15? What is 100 times 15? And what is 1500 minus 500? Great. And then just one more question. What is 1000 plus 1500? So just go ahead and answer these three questions for me in the chat box. And we should get 1500 and we should get 1000 and we should get 2500. So this is some pretty straightforward arithmetic. We should be comfortable doing this without calculators or without really working it out. We should be able to do these types of, this type of arithmetic in our head. And if we can, then we have a lot of the math skills we need to do well on the GMAT. Let's take a look at this question. A salesperson makes a fixed base salary of $1,500 per month plus a commission of $100 for every scooter he sells. If the salesperson sells 15 scooters in a month but his expenses are $500 per month for coming, for coming to work, what is the net income per month on what he earns? Well, the answer is $2,500 obviously, right? That was easy. You could, should have just had that answer pop into your head after reading that word problem, right? Probably not didn't happen for me, it might happen for some, you know, 0.1% of the population. But really, this question was the question that we just looked at, the math that we just did, the, I can even remember, it was pretty straightforward, it was 15 times 100, and it was uh, 1500 minus 500, and it was uh, 1500 plus 1000. Pretty simple arithmetic, this question is actually asking us the exact same thing. But it doesn't look like it, does it? So. What's important is to understand that the GMAT is more information management challenge than nasty math questions, and let's break it down. A salesperson makes a fixed base salary of $1,500 per month plus a commission of $100 per scooter. He sells. If the salesperson sells 15 scooters in a month, but his expenses are $500 a month for coming to work, let's take that out of his base salary, we get what is his net income per month that he earns and 1,000 plus 1,500 equals 2,500. So we can see that, and that even went quickly of course because we just went through it, but on the GMAT, on questions like these, and this isn't actually a super easy question, there's a decent percentage of the population that gets this question incorrect when they first do it, um, but I don't think if most people were given the question worded as arithmetic like we did before we saw the question, I'd say almost 100% of people would get it correct. But as soon as you turn it into a word problem, a whole percentage of the population has a tough time doing it, especially given the amount of time that the GMAT gives you, etc. You have to anticipate that and be able to understand that there's a lot of questions that have simple arithmetic written and hidden behind a nasty word problem. So that all said, uh, were correct. So, great. Well, let's hop over here and take a look at our homework for the week. It's pretty straightforward. It's 15 word problems. So, word problem is the tag that you'll have in Grocket if you're a Grocket member. Uh, and I want you to work 15 word problems. Do them and review them. Don't just do them. 
And just one more thing before we uh, hand off uh, to Stacy, I want to let everybody know about, I'll do it eight right here, we've set up a new site for everyone in the GMAT course. You can access it publicly. I'm going to put the URL up here, just one second. Twiddler's giving me a little trouble. I'll write it out for you. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's just courses.grocket.com slash GMAT dash MBA dash class. Let me actually load it up and show you what's there. So you just go to this URL, I kind of move this down so you can see it. There you go. Courses dot grocket dot com slash gmat dash mba dash class. Is that right, Jake? Mm -hmm. Great. So let me just give you a quick tour of this site. We just set it up. It's not perfect yet, but uh, I think it'll give you a bunch of quick, easy access to some stuff that we're doing in class here. So you can see this, the, the homework assignments are here. You can scroll all the way down to lesson one. Click on that. You can see the homework from lesson one. You can download the PDF of the slides from lesson one or you can just view them. If you have a Google viewer, you can actually just go ahead and review them right from that link. So uh, on, on the home page, we also have the course session. You can subscribe to it if you want. Just click down over here. Uh, click on this and it'll add it to your Google Calendar if you have one. Uh, and then again, that's, that's pretty much all there is there for now. You can contact us as well. We're going to be adding more. If you have some suggestions on things to add to this site, let us know. But like I said, for right now, your homework assignments are there. Your, uh, the slides from the classes will be there. Uh, and the schedule is there. And a quick contact us. And here's the link uh, as well. We will get that emailed out to you guys in the next uh, uh, few days as well. Thanks a lot for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the class. I'm going to hand off over to Stacy Blackman here. Hope everyone has a great day. We'll see you on Saturday. Uh, Stacy, thanks for joining us. Have a great class, and here's over to you.